Hi, I'm Mike Semmel from fxguide.com for Wired. In the new Robocop film, Omnicorp's solution to the acceptance of robots in the USA is to actually put a guy in the suit, in particular, injured policeman Alex Murphy. As the first Robocop film showed us, a real actor in a real suit makes for a very, very bulky suit. Besides, the guy in the suit is meant to only be part there, having kind of been blown to bits earlier in the film. In other words, he's missing huge parts of his body. So how did they put just part of actor Joel Kinnaman in a robotic suit? Well, the producers opted for a very on-set solution. Given that much of the character is digital, you might expect to see the now familiar green or gray tracking suit. This is the kind of thing that's the familiar trademark of motion capture. Well, there were some of those used, but only for deploying the EM-208s walking down the streets of, say, Tehran. For the character Alex Murphy, even though the suit would be redone digitally, slimmer and sometimes without an arm, the team at Framestore in the UK opted to still have the actor wear a real and very expensive physical suit. And there are several advantages to doing this. The first is they get terrific lighting reference and they can see any sort of reflections or anything that would have happened in that real environment. Secondly, as Joel was first to admit, the suit really helps the performance and his own acting choices. The way I moved in a suit, I did want to give it something a little bit more robotic. So when I was walking, I'd turn my head first and then the shoulders afterwards. So the idea is that he's a superhuman and has very fluid motion. And you know, after all, somebody has to effectively act the motion of the Robocop suit. And having the actor actually do it means that we, the audience, have a more consistent performance, plus the lighting and camera department actually have something real to frame up to on set, not to mention the other actors having something more realistic to react to. So even if you have to painstakingly paint out things that aren't wanted, sections of shoulder or hands, if you start with more than a guy in a grey suit, you're going to be better off. And thankfully, in some of the shots, a lot of the background was actually also added, which makes the job of adding a digital Robocop actually sometimes easier. Sometimes literally just his face or his chin was lifted from the original material and almost everything else was digitally altered. So don't forget to subscribe for more behind the scenes action. I'm Mike Seymour for Wired.